Hello, welcome to Data Arts Sports Betting Conversations. Today we're up to episode 11, how Infront's enhanced betting content and technology will improve user experience. Today we're being joined by Chris Catling, Senior Director, Head of Betting at Infront Sports and Media AG. And as always, we're joined by Kevin Twitchell, Advisor at Data Art. So Chris, tell us a little bit about yourself and how did you get to uh, where you are today? Yeah, great. Well, thanks so, so much for uh, for inviting me on. So I joined uh, Infront Agency in April of this year. So, so it's been six months, but been a, an exhilarating six months setting up the new uh, Infront Better uh, business unit, which I'm sure we'll kind of dive into uh, later on. Prior to that, I was at a company called Stats Perform, and I had a commercial role looking at um, rights acquisition, so buying betting rights, both data and video, from sports rights holders and sports federations and helping them commercialize that to the betting industry which is a interesting growth space uh, at the moment before that i was uh, i did a, a stint at img um, and i helped them um, enter the ott business the streaming ott business we did some yeah. cool things we launched uh, um, a couple of direct to consumer channels, uh, the most successful of which was in Scandinavia with La Liga and Serie A rights um, and launching a, a brand new channel from scratch, which was uh, super interesting and learned loads about sort of marketing and how you'd get uh, a streaming proposition up off the ground. And then before that, I was at Delta Trade for um, a good number of years, for, for over 10 years, um, where it was all about making using technology to make sports more entertaining, which I think is probably sort of really stuck to me as being a core value of what I want to do. And, and I think as we're defining and, and putting the proposition together in, for in front better, it's certainly something that I want to bring to uh, to the betting industry and, and think about fan engagement and and how that can really work in the in the betting industry and before all that i played rugby for 10 years and got beaten up and uh didn't earn enough money which meant i needed to go into the technology industry <laughs> that's a that's a very cool background i think this is our first uh guest who's uh played a professional sport right kevin i don't think we yeah yeah any... no, this is exciting and Pro rugby athletes. too yeah this is yeah. Very... Actually, well, rugby's going through them. rugby's going through a tricky time at the moment with uh, in the in this country with a couple of the couple of the clubs uh, having some financial problems, but um, uh, and and rugby as a game with uh, you know uh, head injury and and how right. they're going to go through that. But uh, I was I fortunately sort of joined it as the game went professional and the game was figuring out lots of things, but it was uh, it was a good time. Yeah, excellent. So tell us a little about your company and why you decided to get into the sports betting space. Yeah, sure. So so Infront are a you know a big global sports marketing agency. Um the genesis of the of the business was was around the FIFA broadcast rights and and you know they 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 work still work closely with FIFA, um, are doing a lot with the Qatar tournament coming up, um, and work with lots of other sort of marquee sports rights holders. Um, commercialising their broadcast rights and their sponsorship rights. And in front of being around the um, the betting industry for a long time, because within those agreements with the with their clients, um, they had um, taken the betting rights and then sold them on to aggregators that kind of aggregate the um, betting rights content uh, and sell them on to sort of sitting between the sports rights holders and sports federations. And I think in front have kind of realized um, that instead of passing them on to aggregators, there's the possibility of building the technology that's needed in the middle um, to then stream and distribute that to bookmakers themselves. And they spent you know, a good um, two years sort of analysing the space and and being involved in in passing those rights on, um, and asked me to get involved and build a team, which we've done over the last six months in in building out that technology and the uh, and the business unit. Yeah, excellent, excellent. Um, so regarding uh, you know that specific technology <clears throat> you're focusing on. Um, how is it um, kind of driving your your product forward? Uh, we can talk about that. 
Yeah, sure. So, you know, to, to, we, 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 we've bought a really decent set of content um, uh, and, and we're, we're talking about content. I mean, I mean, live video streaming. So uh, making a deal with with um, over 30 rights holders. Um, so we've got the EFL rights, the English Football League rights, um, Carabao Cup, Championship League One, League Two games. We've got the Turkish Super League rights. Uh, and the Coupe de France, the kind of French um, cup competition, as being sort of you know examples of of some of the content that we've got, um, and we very quickly have got using partners and 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 various uh, um, people that we know have got a really robust streaming platform up off the ground and in fact um already despite only launching uh sort of three or four months ago we've had over 100 million views um of our content on, on our clients platforms um so the, the you know the streaming tech is uh is incredibly important along with the content deals that we've done we have some data rights which we are um, in the process of um, of figuring out how we distribute that data and how we collect and distribute that data, um, and then I guess from a tech perspective, you know, at the moment the product is a is a you know uh, pretty standard uh, video stream onto uh, onto betting websites, but we've got real kind of ambition to to make that a more interactive experience, more fan engagement. Um, I guess sort of harking back to my my past is you know especially at Delta Trade it was how can you bring in new data points new overlays onto a video to really sort of make that a far more engaging product um, and that's something we're kind of looking looking forward to and uh, and working with various technology technologies and technology businesses to kind of make that happen. That's interesting. So, so, you know, when you look at that coming from your OTT background, right, and then you look at data and you look at all these leagues. So what's what's the challenge for your company right now to sort it all out? Like, you know, from a technology point of view to really get this going? I mean, you've been there six months yeah. as you look ahead, you know, like what's the biggest hurdle right now that you're trying to kind of get over? Yeah, I mean, I guess. It's been it's been an exhilarating six months, and, we, and right. to achieve what we've done has been has been great. So that's a lot. That's a lot of licensing deals. Those those are that's that's pretty incredible. The, the, right? and, 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 actually, and actually, and actually, the the rights acquisition piece um, has been relatively easy. In in oh, I mean, all, but all parts of the the right. all parts of the steps have, have had challenges, but the rights acquisition piece, because of in front background. And right. because right. of them having lots of relationships through the sports industry, um, the rights acquisition piece, whilst it is a challenge, is um, uh, has been a relatively easy step, uh, and we've got some some really decent rights. I mean, I think our entry into the market and lots of other factors happening is pushing the value of those rights higher and higher. And and part of that is because of the growth of the uh, or the or the um, the presumed growth of the global betting market, and you know sports federations sort of really looking into and trying to understand the value of those rights. Um, at the other end, the you know the betting companies are getting more and more competitive, and their budgets are being squeezed. So, and I think our entry into the market as um, uh, with another player buying rights. Um, as possibly push, uh, push that up, but I, I I feel that our our success in in getting those deals over the line has 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 been because of kind of in front stature in the business, and I really you know uh, that that doesn't daunt me too much in how we grow our content portfolio over the next few years. The the operations and technology. <clears throat> is a big challenge uh and to sort of get to the scale that we've already got at in the in the first six months i'm kind of really happy about with progress um how we develop the you know the products that were kind of mentioned earlier on and you know how we really sort of differentiate that product i think is is the next challenge that we really need to sort of embrace um and i guess the you know the the challenge of explaining to a new industry, a new market for in front um, of going to betting operators and explaining 
the relevance of in front, how we're going to be a, around for, for so long, what the technology and the operations and the supply that we can provide to them. You know, that that's, you know, undoubtedly that's a um that's a challenge. But you know, in the first six months we've uh, we've had conversations with with a lot of betting operators and uh and have got some really good deals over the line and are already sort of delivering all that. So um but yeah, there's you know, there's some very distinct challenges in in <laughs> getting a new business up off the ground and you know, even hiring a new team and bonding a new team and getting that all together. But all of those other soft skills, as well as the business things, uh, take some time in putting in place. But you know, it's been a, it's been from my own perspective, it's been an incredible six months. Yeah, that's quite a handful for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, going back to kind of some of the uh, content that you're planning to provide in the in the form of video, and uh, just from a personal perspective, being kind of a a person who you know bets daily located here in New York, um, you know, there's a, a you know video available for you know some of the wagers. Some of the wagers don't have video available. I guess it depends on on the event and and kind of the logistics around that. But even in, in circumstances when the video is available, um, you know, there there is some lag time between kind of the real time score. Um, and what, what you see on the screen, which, you know, I, would, I don't want to say defeats the purpose, but if you're lucky enough to position the video to block out the score, then you're not kind of ruining the video for yourself. Yeah. Um, and I assume that's a, 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 a problem that, that you're uh, aiming to tackle. For sure. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of really passionate about uh, optimizing that, that latency. And I've done lots of work in, in, other roles that I've been in in thinking about this. So the, the betting industry, it, it, I mean, the, the, the have low latency video streams. Is it, they're always ahead of the kind of broadcast streams and uh, and media streams that are out there because of the importance of latency to betting. You know that you know for integrity reasons, bookmakers have to be the most up to date. And you know if you if you're on betting platforms, you'll see them updating way before everything else and that's from a data perspective so that you know the the all the betting is done off the data so the data is as low latent as it can be and also because of that the 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 operators or the suppliers in the space have really worked hard in optimizing the latency of the video stream uh, and typically now that's down to sort of six to nine to seconds but that that's still sort of significantly ahead of broadcast streams which can be up to a minute a minute and a half yeah. later. but a broadcast audience doesn't really have the um doesn't really have any other reference point other than just watching the uh the broadcast stream whereas on a betting platform of course you have the reference point of the data updating which is then updating the markets and the trading that's happening um and only relatively recently you know real-time streaming technologies such as we're using on on this call um have allowed for you know absolute real-time streaming um the the challenge of it is to do it at mass scale so if you get the audiences that i kind of suggested that we're getting um already on our platforms the ability for that platform to deliver real-time streaming uh, to thousands of uh, users all requesting the video at the same time is the challenge but but you know the technology has moved on in you know in the in the last few years to really allow that and i i agree with absolutely agree with you russell that is that if you're watching a, a sport like tennis or cricket sort of non-continuous sports that stop right. and then start data data is always as low latent as can be like you know milliseconds um and if you're watching a video stream that has six to nine seconds then that non-continuous event is is often over before you're then seeing it which then defeats the purpose of having the video on the betting side um so i'm really keen and um, you know we were already starting to look at it in in how we can bring that um, bring that forward and and make that a sort of really um, good offering for what we're offering the market. 
which should which should then allow all sorts of other things onto the, the video experience. So then you can bring in lots of interactivity around that data because exactly. it's yeah. all sitting to pull together. Yeah, and, and then other like fast moving sports like like basketball, you know, like you you have bets for um, you know, who'll score the next basket or um or, or in hockey, a goal can happen really at any second, right? You know, within two seconds you can have a couple of passes and pucks in the net. Um, because they're they're you know, wagers out there like you know, who'll have the next goal or uh which team, which player, who will score the next point. Uh there's a lot to it. And yeah, it, it kind of, uh, I mean, the, the ultimate goal, um, I guess, you know, for this concept is like, you know, to have like a, a, a real uh, time experience of, you know, the video feed and kind of running um, wagers, right. Related to, to that video feed. So you can just, yeah, exactly. yeah. and, and, and yeah. you know, that, that that's in our, in our sort of product roadmap and, and thoughts on, on kind of how we can bring that forward um, and really make that, you really make that video experience, um, uh, you know, second to none. Yeah, I guess I'm just more venting to you than uh, asking for it. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I mean, that that's a, a super interesting topic. And yeah, I think like once, uh, you know, you can crack that that code, that'll, that'll be, a, I think, a game changer. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think for sure. you know, it's, it's the... The U.S. market and what the U.S. consumers are demanding, I think, is is you know, it's an interesting topic. You know, the the um, the UI and availability of 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 betting as the U.S. market opens, I think, is is driving some uh, is will I think drive innovation and uh, um, I, I certainly want us to be at the you know. At the forefront of that. How how are you looking? You know, we're just talking about this, and you're talking about all those leagues. And how are you looking at the U.S. from your seat? You know, Russell and I have you know just come from G two E, and we've been to a bunch of these you know these big events in the last year. And obviously, the business is just on fire, and it's booming, and it's a global business now. And there's so much global interest in the U.S. So you're sitting across the pond looking. Looking at our sports market, what what is that strategy? You know, yeah, from technology no, and strategically. Yeah, and no, my, my my sales team were uh, had the tough job of uh, being in Vegas as well. Um, oh, they tell me, sorry, they tell me sorry, sorry, yeah, work, yeah. But, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, no, for sure. Uh, yeah, I saw them at seven a.m. somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's 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 you know it's an exciting space that's kind of really growing uh and you know our portfolio it, it is what we're aiming to get from our portfolio is uh, a full 24 7 content proposition across the you know across all markets in the world right um and um you know there's been some big the the you know the major sports in the US have done some sort of very, very sizable deals, some of which I was um have been involved in or around um over the last few years. Um and I think that you know everyone is sort of watching to understand how quickly the US market really um really grows. Um for us, of course, it's it's really interesting. I think the guys had the uh, had some really interesting chats with um, with the operators as they're clambering for market share and, and moving up. Right. And we're hoping our kind of content proposition is uh, is very relevant. You know, we've got we've got forty percent of our of our content proposition is is soccer um, from around the world, um, and you know the, we're hoping and and then and then we have a we have a um, very decent. Uh, amount of ice hockey in front is very strong in, in ice hockey with some lots of various different relationships and basketball and basketball would be our kind of third sport so um you know there's there's content that we hope is kind of very relevant for uh, for the US market and for sure we we're, we're looking at that but I, you know there's you know there's also i think the the general growth of the the global betting industry is also the reason why in front really were keen to get into this space at this time you know with mark brazil um japan potentially india over the next five years and and, and many others you know huge territories with you know significant populations that um 
that already have, you know, a, a black market or a, a unregulated right. betting market, right. which you would envisage governments around the world sort of th- figuring out how and where they can get in from a from a tax perspective and the and the benefits and the downsides of of regulating that uh, of regulating that betting market. But I think you know that that global growth I think is um is certainly um interesting and it's an interesting time to be setting up this new business as as that's all happening. Yeah. 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 There's, yeah. It's definitely Excellent. there's clearly opportunity here in the US. You know, there was definitely that was the big topic of conversation, you know, content, video latency, technology, you know, all these new players. So there's you know it's wide open. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Excellent. Um, and just, uh, I'm just curious, uh, like you mentioned, you know, hockey and basketball. Um, are you, are you referring to like the NHL and the NBA outside of the U S or just focused on the U S market? So the, the, the way that the rights acquisition tend to happen is that the, the, you, you would do a deal. So, um, one of our competitors has done a deal for the NHL, um, and they tied those rights down for a while. So, um, but the but the in front um, uh, relationships across the ice hockey world are, are really strong. So we've got you know we're, we've got some significant ice hockey properties within our within our portfolio, and I think you know it's interesting you know our data we we've got an evolving data strategy. Being new to the market, we need to sort of really figure out what technology is um, to collect that. But we're speaking to some really interesting partners that um you know and and the 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 chip and um puck tracking solutions oh, that's in the NHL. Yeah, yeah 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 that are in, in the nhl and, and and are in the european competitions that we've got you know there's a really interesting uh proposition with that because that that's developing some really um you know developed data points um which betting markets i think still don't have the um uh desire or capability um or a little bit of both probably a virtuous circle of really developing new markets off that of those data sources and i think as in front are coming at it from a from a media perspective as well as a betting perspective i think there's a role for us to play in really using the new data that's been created uh, at an incredible depth uh, level to to make the sport better from a media perspective and thinking about how those new data points and those new insights can really sort of help that sport and then how that then develops into um, a more full-on betting proposition in new markets that you wouldn't have been able to do until you had these new data propositions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really interesting, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think uh, yeah, this was this was great, uh, Kevin. Do you yeah, have any other great. questions? No, this is yeah. great. First time I've ever this spoken all... to a professional rugby player, so that's <laughs> been kind of <laughs> uh, my, yeah, the my, highlight. The highlight of this series. You my, know? my brain didn't get too badly fried when I was. No, born. it seems like <laughs> it, it, I'm very impressed. Uh, you must have done all the damage. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> to the other players. <laughs> uh, well, super well, this is great well, Chris, yeah yeah thanks a lot chris very time we really appreciate it and this was uh uh I, I would like to say part one because i'd love to see like where you are I, six months or a year from now i mean this sounds you know very exciting you know what, what you're doing over there oh, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was just yeah, about to say the same thing Next yeah, time yeah, you yeah. have to bring in some of the content that you've done and some of the technology and maybe showcase it uh, yeah. uh, on the next one, which would be great. You know, it's a yeah, great idea. To. I'd love to. Yeah. Thanks very much. All right. Great. All right. Super. Cheers. Thank you, Chris. Yep.